All right, so on this week's Racing From Home, Jerry and I are pleased to be joined by Jack Wolf, who along with his wife, Laurie, serves as the managing partner of Starlight Racing, which of course helped bring us Triple Crown winner Justify in 2018. And now they're back on the Derby Trail this year with not one, but two, Authentic and Charlatan. Jack, thanks for taking the time. Uh, give us an update on Authentic. It's reported that he's being pointed for the June 6th Santa Anita Derby. Uh, is that still the case, and uh, how's he doing? He's doing fine. He, he breezed, uh, I want to say, Sunday. And you know how Bob can get excited about these horses, but uh, uh, he really liked the, the way the horse breezed, and he's in good order to uh, to be in the Santa Anita Derby. So, you know, I, I heard that uh, Peter Yurton might, you know, enter his speed horse, but have you guys heard anything on that? Uh, shoot or shoot, yes. He is planning on running shoot or shoot. I texted with him a couple days ago. That's the current plan, at least. Right. So as, as Jack, as impressive as he was in the San Felipe, uh, even with other speed horses in there, um, it, he's going to be a strong favorite. But by running in the Santa Anita Derby, are you essentially giving up any chance at all for a triple crown? Because it would, the Belmont is scheduled for two weeks after the Santa Anita Derby. So it'd be virtually impossible in this day and age to wheel him back. I would agree with you, Jay. I mean, I haven't talked to Bob specifically about that, but you know, he's, he doesn't want to, he wants to keep these good horses separated. He wants them to run in the best spots and with the best spacing. And obviously I don't know how these trainers have, have kept up with this stuff with all the uncertain uncertainty, but, um, we're committed to the Santa Anita Derby, and I don't think there's any way you can run back into Belmont. So you've been around plenty of good horses, Justify included. I mean, I think Starlight has had 11 horses in the Kentucky Derby over the years, going all the way back to Harlan's Holiday in 2002. You know a good horse when you see one. What's your, what's your scouting report uh, on Authentic? <laughs> well, he's a good one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the... And I think you guys wanted to talk a little bit about the, the new team that, um, that SF, Bloodstock, and Saul, and, and Starlight, you know, joined together. It was Tom Ryan's idea from SF, Bloodstock. And we've got, you know, Frankie Brothers looking at the horses, Henry Field, Donato, uh, for that matter. <clears throat> you know, Tom Ryan's looking at him, and then Baffert. So, um those guys know how to find a good horse. All I try to do is, is raise the money and, and go to the races and have a good time. But uh, yeah, we, we've been lucky through the years to have some good horses. What was the impetus behind that partnership? Um, how long has it been going on and how does it operate? Well, we've, uh, you know, I've known Tom for a number of years and we've really not done any business together until we talked about uh, doing a, you know, leasing the racing rights on Audible. And then once we got that done, um, he asked if I wanted to do the same thing with Justify. So I wasn't as smart as I looked. I was after Audible instead of Justify. But, you know, after doing that, <clears throat> um, he came up with the idea of, of getting a, f a few of us together and um, going out and buying, you know, just Colts with the idea of, of sending them to, to Bob. So. I think that's, we've got, you know, around 20 three-year-olds, and I think we bought like 15 two-year-olds that are out there now. I see you had a couple running at Santa Anita on Sunday, or Monday, rather. You had one of them, two of them were in the same race. One of them, you had a winner there? Yeah, but the one horse, you know, the horse that ran third needed a race, Jerry. Um, but the horse that uh, won the race, I think he's, he's an okay horse. Uh, I don't know how far he wants to go, but uh, uh, yeah, it was fun. Another another winner. So nowadays, as we all know, the tail sort of wags the dog, breeding versus racing. Uh, and buying just colts is the ultimate goal to try to hit a home run and sell those colts as stallion prospects for the... For yeah, the that, that's a business plan. <clears throat> and uh, as you know, we, we've sold the, the breeding rights on, on Charlatan and uh, eight rings and um, maybe at some point we we do something you know with authentic also but um you know it's a sort of it's a it's 
a very risky thing is, is you guys know it's sort of all or nothing with these coats. And we've been lucky enough through the years to have some nice fillies and, and actually Star Ladies, Laurie's partnership, we're talking to a couple other people to sort of copy um, SF's model uh, with fillies and getting four or five of us together and, you know, going out and buying some nice fillies. So what I love about it is, you know, you can spread your risk. You don't have 100% of the overhead. Uh, and you can have fun with these guys. Well, Justify two years ago, Triple Crown winner, and now you've got two live horses for the Derby and Authentic and, and Charlatan. It looks like you guys have a, a great plan. You've hit the ground running, that's for sure. Yeah, as you know, Jerry, the, you know, the odds of finding these horses are pretty, pretty remote. But um, I guess if you, you get a good team, you've got enough capital and you've got a good trainer, which apparently we've, we've got all those things. Uh, hopefully we can do something with it this year and, and continue on through next year. Well, let's segue to Charlatan now. Uh, we're taping this on Tuesday afternoon, and it's been reported that uh, Baffert had a couple of horses test positive at the Oakland Park meeting, one of which we're told was Charlatan. Can you uh, confirm that? What, uh, what can you tell us about that situation? Well, you know, Randy, I think it'd be better to, to get Bob to comment on it. He's in the middle of this stuff. Uh, if, I'm, you know, I haven't heard from Arkansas as an owner. Um, <laughs> just getting a call from Jay Pribman. Here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> so, uh, I think it would be better. It's, it's so early in this whole thing. And I've gotten a number of calls today, but... I think Bob is the one that knows what's going on and would need to address it. So that aside, uh, with such a, an impressive win in the Arkansas Derby, what is the plan with Charlatan as you go forward? I mean, a mile and eighth around one turn Belmont Park Stakes, Belmont Stakes rather, seems right in his wheelhouse. You, you know, it does, Jerry, and, and, and Tom, Ryan, and myself, we don't tend to, we do leave the, the race selections up to Baffert. I mean, he, he's seeing them every day. He knows which ones are better at which time. And uh, even though he came out initially saying that he want to run Charlatan in a doll and in the Belmont, I think he's, he's thinking something different with Charlatan, regardless of this other stuff that, that's going around. But uh, I don't know, something like, um, and like I say, I would just be, guessing, you know, the race at New Jersey or if they did something with the Travers and moved it up, something like that. So what are your thoughts about the, the Triple Crown in its 2020 format? Well, listen, I mean, it's, I'm just tickled to death that we're back racing and the horses have the races and, and even without the spectators, I think it's, you know, it's great. So what we miss out on on the triple crown thing uh, to me it doesn't really matter it's uh but i think it's going to be cool that that hopefully we get all three of the races in uh, whether they're you know people there or not so jack you're a louisville guy grew up there what's the feeling around the town there around the city about moving the derby about spectators no spectators what's the sentiment locally there well, I think it, it's more than just the Derby, Jerry. I think it's the uh, the whole thing with being locked in our houses and, and all that. But uh, I thought it was, you know, you know, in hindsight, it, it would have been great if we could have kept the sequence on on the three races. But at the time, it just didn't seem like it could happen. Uh, at least Churchill went ahead and. and cemented the thing by going to the September 5th date. I know Naira has commented that, you know, they would have liked to have been involved and I'm sure the Strong group would have too, but uh, uh, I think the, the feeling in Louisville and anywhere else is just thank God we've got race racing going on and if there's an asterisk uh, next to a Belmont because it's a mile and an so be it. Uh, but it's the best that we've got to go with. Let's talk, talk a little starlight now. Um, 
we all, I guess, years and years ago, first became familiar with the concept of uh, fractional ownership in racehorses through the late Cot Campbell and Dogwood Stable. And now you've got Starlight and, and others as well that are, that are doing that uh, very well. You got your, your partners have to be having a blast right now. What are the nuts and bolts uh, behind the Starlight Racing operation? And give us an idea of how it operates in any given year. So we started out uh, just with, uh, you know, the first year we, we formed a partnership was actually the year that we bought a Shado and Purge. And uh, my two partners at the time, they bought in on three horses. One was a Shado, one was Purge, and the other one couldn't run. So uh, we got off to a pretty good start. And um, it's, it's funny you're talking about it because in our downtime, we, we've been redesigning our website, which we just completed. And it's, it's pretty cool to go, go through and see some of the old stars and re replay of the races and stuff like that. But to, to be specific, to answer your question, we get, each year we get 12 to 14 people. Um, we go to the yearling sales this year, it's only gonna be two, the FASIC September sale now, along with the Keeneland September sale. And, um, you know, we will buy some horses privately, but. The idea, especially with what we're doing with SF now, is to you know try and buy like 20 horses uh, so that we you know we have a shot at, at you know with the numbers. And then you know for years uh, I've been with Todd Pletcher and still have horses with Todd and and we still do do business with him and with Starlight and Star Lady. So it's basically just uh, a general partnership that. Uh, I mean, most of us have been together for some time now, but you know, you know, Donna Barton Brothers, one of your compatriots, uh, she does the marketing for us, and she said everybody thinks that we don't have any room for new partners, but um, you know, we lose a partner here and there, so we always got room. Then that was going to be my question with the involvement of, of SF. Do you try and limit it to twelve to fifteen, or you're entertaining, you know, new people coming in? Yeah, Jerry, and you know, it's it's been through the years, even with Harlan's Holiday, which was our first crop of horses that we bought, um, it was just Laurie and myself, but still, we we had a demand for like 70 tickets at, at the Derby. You know, that was 20 years ago. And the people over there were nice enough to work with us, and you know all the players over there. And... And it's, it's not too different right now when, you know, you get a good horse and you have to, but it's, the tracks have been great. I think they're getting the joke that these syndicates are here. They're going to be here for a while. Let's try to accommodate them on big race days. Has the, uh, the interruption in racing uh, due to the coronavirus uh, impacted the finances of an operation like Starlight Racing with, with no purse money coming in? And obviously the horses are still eating. Well, normally we're used to having no purse money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Whether, whether they're racing or not. But uh, um, it, it, it has affected us. But really the, the model we have at Starlight, the, to be successful financially, we have to get a stallion prospect, or in the case of the Phillies, a broodmare prospect, to make it worthwhile. So that having said that, we, you know, and the purses as we already are seeing are gonna be cut significantly. But our, our whole model is hopefully to get one or two stallion or, or broodmare prospects a year to pay for the ones that can't run. What's, what's the ratio, Jack, that, that you consider acceptable? What, one, one stallion hit for every four you buy, what, one every, every five, what, what is the, the ratio, success ratio? That's a great question. And uh, you ask a number of people that, that have had some success. And I've, I've heard people boast that, you know, you know, 10% of their horses they buy are grade ones. And, you know, it's, I haven't done the math on it, Jerry, but if, if you can get 10%, I mean, that's huge. Have we done that? I'm, I'm not even really sure, but, uh, 
Uh, I'd be happy with every 10 horses we buy. If we could get a great one winner, it'd be great. So how have you been holding up through all this personally? Uh, you bored? I have my peaks and valleys. <laughs> I go three or four days where I work out and do the right stuff and then three or four days bad stuff. So I just go back and forth. How about yourself? I think we're doing okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're hanging in there. Do you miss more not going, being able to go out to the barns and watch them in the morning or going to the races in the afternoon? You can't do either. So which do you miss more, you think? I miss, I miss the sales. I like going to the sales. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we'll still have the sales, but they're, they're in different, you know, we're going to have to adapt. And uh, the two-year-old sales, which we historically have not been that, that active in, you know, they're redoing those schedules. But, uh, you know, I would say 50-50. I, I like going to the backside, and, and I like having a good, fun day at the track, too. So, miss it all. <laughs> Well, you know, how Jerry handles this virus thing is always in direct response to how many golf courses are open and whether he can swing a golf club or not. Jerry, uh, you know where, where are you located? Are you down in Florida now? I'm in Fort Lauderdale, and, and I belong. Oh, you've had some rain, haven't you? Oh, my gosh. We've had over eight inches the last two days, and it just, it's starting to blow in again right now. So we'll have almost a foot in, in three days. So who's your agent? How come you couldn't have get, gotten tied into Tiger Woods and played on the, the slope? <laughs> I, I, I'm only down here. Those, those guys' level is way up here. Although watching it, I, I, I want to believe it. You, you could have played with uh, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> but we've listen, if you play enough golf, you've always been where he was. And it, it's once, it, once it goes in a bad direction, it's hard to get back. Well, he, he turned it around a little bit. Yeah. So, good. Yeah. yeah. So we got Fort Lauderdale. Go ahead. Playing through the weather they played through. That was awesome for them. Yeah. You know, I didn't see it until they were a couple of holes into it. Was the thing delayed from the start, or did they start on time? Or? It seemed to start when they wanted to, and they finished uh, when they wanted. They kind of hurried up the last few holes just to beat the darkness, if nothing else. We played in the dark before. <laughs> Put a towel <tie> behind <laughs> the hole and swing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got – Fort Lauderdale, Minneapolis, and Louisville represented here. Jack, thanks for taking the time. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. And, and good luck down the road with Authentic and Charlatan. And hopefully there'll be some fans and uh, there'll be owners and we'll be able to see it. And media, we'll be able to see you at the track. All right. We'll see you at the Derby party. At hey, house. you're still having it. Good. <laughs> as of now. Win, lose, or draw. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thanks, guys.